In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a fiber section using OpenSea's Python and then assign that section to a nonlinear element. We will do this using a reinforced concrete cantilever as an example. We're going to create a four node cantilever element and the fiber section that we create will correspond to this concrete section defined on the right. We'll move quickly through the material, so feel free to pause to get the necessary information. Also accompanying this tutorial will be an in-depth code explanation where I go through the code line by line and give my thoughts on why I'm doing what I'm doing. The first step in this process is going to be to create a folder to contain our files. Looking at this folder, we'll create a directory within it and call it documentation. Within this directory, we'll store information related to pre-processing of the model. We will then create two Python files within our main directory, one titled main analysis and one titled model functions. In our main analysis file, we will call upon the functions that we create in our model functions file. The next step isn't necessary, but it's highly recommended. We're going to go into the documentation file and we're going to create an Excel file. We'll name this uh, model information. Within this file, we're going to save images of our model. We will record the XY coordinates for the nodes in our model and we will also save the ZY coordinates for the rebar in our section. Now, if we're returning to the file later, we have a convenient visual guide for the numbers that will be in our model. The numbers are measured from the centroid. We're now ready to begin coding our file. Let's open up the model files function within an editor. We will begin by creating two functions within our model functions file. One to create the sections in the model and one to actually build the cantilever. We will then import the relevant packages, OpenSeas and NumPy, as we'll be using NumPy. We will then define the appropriate units for analysis. We will create a basic model with the model command as well as the test material. We will use this test material before we input the nonlinear properties to make sure that our section is working properly. We then define our nonlinear steel material. Based on the problem definition, we use a yield strength of 350 megapascals and a stiffness of 200 gigapascals. Our ratio between the yield slope and initial slope is 2%. This is a fairly standard value for steel. No optional arguments are necessary for this analysis. Next, we'll define our nonlinear concrete material. We'll use OpenSea's Concrete O2 material, which is a parabolic concrete material that has a, uh, some tensile strength. We will assign this material a yield strength of 30 megapascals as per the problem definition. The other parameters will vary significantly from concrete to concrete. However, we're using some typical values that will work in the very general case we're examining. We can now begin defining the fiber sections within our model. We'll define two sections, one elastic test section and one nonlinear section. We'll use the test section to diagnose problems with our model before moving on to the more complicated nonlinear analysis. We can now begin to define the fibers in our model. We'll define the concrete fibers using a quadrilateral patch command. This command takes the vertices of the beam as an input, and they must be assigned counterclockwise. To correctly assign the vertices to our patch, it is important to understand the local coordinate system of our concrete section and how that relates to the global coordinate system. For reference, we'll highlight the edge of the concrete section and where it corresponds to the global coordinate system. The global coordinate system for our model will be defined as follows. X will be to the right and Y will be upwards. 
We'll now consider the local coordinate system for an element that spans between node 1 and node 2 of our model. For this element, the local x-axis will be defined as going in the direction from node 1 to node 2. We'll denote this as x prime. The local z coordinate will be defined as coming out of the page in two dimensions. Note this is different from the definition in three dimensions. Then the local y axis is perpendicular to the two. We can see that the local x prime axis is in the direction of the global positive y direction. The local y prime axis is in the direction of the global negative x direction. If we look at our cross section, we can now see that for the cross section, the upwards direction will be the y prime axis. The direction side to side will be the z prime axis. Our vertices are then defined as follows, starting in the bottom left as i, and transitioning around to the top left as L. We will define fibers for our rebar using the fiber command. For this command, we'll need the X and Y location of each rebar in our section. To do this, we will do some pre-processing in Python and create an array that has the Y and Z location of each rebar across our section. The following code is used to generate inputs for the quadrilateral patch command. Note that only one fiber is needed in the z direction because these fibers will all have the same y location. The following code is used to assign the yz coordinate for each rebar. First, we'll copy the z coordinate and y coordinates of each rebar into an array from our Excel sheet. We'll then define the area of each rebar, the number of bars by finding the length of each vector, and then we'll define an empty array that contains the number of rebars. We'll finally assign the y and z values of both of our vectors to each bar using a nested enumerate loop. The following code is now used to assign fibers to our test section. For both the quadrilateral patch and the fiber calls, we'll use the test material material. A copy and paste of this code is then used to assign the nonlinear materials to our nonlinear fiber section. Finally, we define our geometric transformation and our beam integration tags. We will use a Lombardo integration rule with four integration points. We define two beam integration objects, one for our test section and one for the nonlinear section. We can now work on our model building function. First, we'll define the nodes in the model. We'll create an X and a Y array for the node coordinates. Then a for loop will iterate through each of the arrays and create the nodes. We will then fix the bottom of our cantilever and use force beam column elements as the nonlinear element. We assign three force beam column elements between each of the four nodes in our model. For these elements, we will begin by using the linear transformation and our linear elastic test section. We have now completed both functions. We'll move to our main analysis file. We will start by importing OpenCs and the model functions file that we just built. We'll then begin building our model by issuing the commands that we just wrote. The get sections command to get our sections and the build model command to build the cantilever. To confirm that our model is working properly, we can import some functions from the post-processing OpenSeas package and then call the plot model command. We can now see a figure of our model. We've now completed the tutorial on how to create a fiber section in OpenSeas. In future videos, I'll show you how to do pushovers on this model.